Could I grow 10s, 11s? And I'm going to include the grow 12s as well. So in this lesson, I'm going to look at engineering graphics and design and specifically the pad. So I'm sure that this time of the year, everyone is busy with their pads and some of you might be struggling. So this lesson here is just to help you to know where to start to just look again at the design brief, what it is, how do you list specifications and what are constraints. So let's quickly look at this PowerPoint and I'll go through it and give you some tips on how to actually tackle that EGD pad of yours. So we are going to start with the design of a cover page for your pad. Now in this cover page, you should contain the following information the name of your school, your name and surname, also list your grade there, a heading for your path, um, this could be something that connects with the scenario, also add a border um, for each page from here onwards, and then also find an image that is best suited for the cover page, or you can even draw a 3D or a perspective artistic drawing of your civil building to make your cover attractive. If you, for example, drive past a, a construction site, there might be a billboard outside showing you what this building or this development is going to look um, like one day when it's finished. And this obviously makes this um, site or this construction site attractive. So the index page needs to cover every aspect of your pad and therefore you need to plan it well. So you have to think from the beginning all the way right through till the end. Do your index page in bullet form and make use of headings and subheadings. Also make use of some page numbers. So here's an example of an index page. Um, Design brief will be on page one, specifications might be on page two, your constraints will be on page three, and there will the list will continue. Freehand drawings or freehand drawing one will be on page eight. So this is just an example. You will have quite a list for your index page. So then uh, just after your index page, you will add an assessment form. This assessment form will be given to you by your educator. Um, you will receive this um, assessment from an educator to add to your PAT portfolio. Make sure you write your name and details on this form. So another tip here is to use your assessment form as a guideline to make sure you have covered every aspect of your PAT. So you can basically use this assessment to check that you have done every single thing that needs to be in your path that will be assessed for marks. Now the design brief. Some people struggle to write the design brief. So the design brief usually consists of two paragraphs. The first paragraph will cover the primary problem found in the scenario. In this paragraph, you will write what the problem is and mention who the solution is for and who will solve it. The second paragraph will cover any secondary problems. So some will be found in the scenario, but can also be found in the specifications outlined in the path. So for example, your primary problem might be that someone asked you to design a granny flat in their backyard and you, that will be the primary problem but the secondary problem will be for example that the granny flat should have a let's say a little uh, balcony overlooking the other side of the yard so that could be a secondary problem just an example so please look at the following examples um, for a design brief. So these examples actually come out of matric pads. So this is just an example for you to use or a direction to use when it comes to writing your own design brief.
Right, and once we've done our design brief, you will look at specifications. So specific, specifications are done in bullet form. So I'm going to give you an example, or I'm going to use an example of how you can formulate specifications. So when you go to a cell phone store and you are looking to, at buying a new cell phone, you might struggle to choose between, for example, the Samsung S20 Plus and the iPhone 11. So what are you going to be based your decisions on is you are going to actually look at the specification given to each phone. Now let's say the Samsung S20. You are going to take the maybe the booklet or you're going to Google the specifications and once you look at those specifications there will be a list. That list might include for example 120 gig hard drive space for the Samsung S20 full HD 8K LCD screen, 60 frames per second 4K camera recording, 128 megapixels camera and so the list will go on. So this will be all listed for example on the Samsung website or you might get it in, at a book, in a booklet at the store. So when you actually look at the phone you might even be able to get even more specifications that weren't listed. For example, they normally won't list where the volume buttons on the phone is. Is it at the top, is it at the bottom, or is it in the middle? Now this could be something that's important for other people. So that can be a specification that you can add on to the list when you compare it with the iPhone. So some of the specifications might not be listed, but you can add more specifications by thinking or looking at the product. So you are going to do a specification list just like this. And I've got an example over here of a few specifications listed from a PAT assignment. So this again was from a metric paper on the left hand. Um, side there's a few Afrikaans specifications on the right hand side we've got a few English ones so you can have a look there after you've done your specifications you have to also list any constraints now this is the difficult one that some people don't understand or they struggle finding the reason why it's difficult to find constraints is because they are not really listed inside the pack but again, you're going to list it in a bullet form. Um, and then constraints can be diffic a difficult concept for a pet. But this will be a list of things that make your design difficult. So anything that maybe restricts something, you will need to think of a few possible constraints. Now let's go back to that example of the cell phones where we listed the specifications. So if we look at the Samsung S20 and we say, yes, like the Samsung S20 has a very good specifications by saying that it's got a very large, good quality screen. But a large screen could also mean that the phone is heavier than their previous models or heavier comparing to the iPhone 11. And also that the phone can be a bit large when you want to maybe store it or fit it into your pockets. So that automatically then becomes constraints. And exactly the way uh, as we started thinking about the phone and what could make you know, a specification a constraint, that's how you're going to do it with your PAT assignment as well. You're going to la label at least five constraints that you can find or think about when it comes to your path design. So a few examples of constraints. So when we look at the floor area that has been given to you in your path, which is a specification, you can also say that that floor area can become a constraint if when you start planning you feel that the floor area is a bit small to fit all the different rooms for this building or house. So that is a constraint. Um, also another constraint here, I need to collect more information with regards to a typical outlay of a flat. This could be your first time designing a flat 
and you obviously need to do a bit of more research and that becomes time consuming and a constraint. The kitchen design must be open plan and fitted into a small space to flow into the living area. Now that can be a constraint because kitchens are normally um, items that contain big items and are designed for a big space. But you need to now make it smaller and make it fit into a small space that will then flow into your living area. So this, these are just a few examples that you can basically, maybe some of them you can actually use in your fat, uh, depending on your scenario. And this brings us to the end of our first lesson with regards to the fat. In the next lesson, we are going to look at research and how you can um, you know, formulate your research. Have a good evening or have a good day and we'll see or chat soon.